Hey everybody, it's Jay St. Hilaire, author of Stop Running, Be a Homeowner Now, real estate entrepreneur, real estate investor. And uh, tonight I want to talk about pessimist, being a pessimist or an optimist. We really want to talk about being uh, an optimist. But uh, in the previous Facebook Lives, we've always done something about real estate. And I want to do something about uh, a little bit about motivation tonight. And since it's a new year, uh, I want to say hi to Aaron Secor. How are you? Aaron just joined us. Tom Kerr just joined us. And we're going to be talking about being an optimist. And we got to do some diagnosing. And I see already I spelt this wrong. <laughs> Diagnosis. Um, Tim Fisher, Marky McCarger, how you doing, buddy? Pat Hayes, Don Brown. Tonight we're going to be talking about pessimist and optimist. We all, we want to be an optimist. So uh, I want to talk about, you know, optimi optimism is a faith that leads to achievement. Helen Keller had a quote, and uh, that was part of it. The other part of the quote is, nothing can be done without hope and confidence. So as we talk tonight about something uh, inspiring or motivating, uh, something positive, uh, are you a pessimist? Or are you an optimist? And we're just going to talk quick about a few things, how we feel uh, this Christmas time, this New Year's New Year's uh, resolution. Every time in January, we all start to uh, have New Year's resolutions. And 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 the research, it usually about after 12 days, uh, that resolution is gone. So let's start on the right track this this evening. And uh, we're not going to be talking much about real estate tonight, but we're going to be talking about something that. We normally don't. Nobody likes to talk about this kind of stuff, but we are, we're always thinking about it. At least I am. And um, as as we talk about uh, being a pessimist or an optimist, really it's an emotional perception, how we perceive ourselves uh, to be. So that that's some of the questions that uh, I spelled diagnosis wrong. <laughs> See that, Tom? Mm -hmm. uh, I just noticed it anyway. Um, we won't worry about that. Uh, let's talk about how we feel about ourselves and how uh, maybe the people that we hang around with, our family, uh, or, or basically ourselves. We're trying to improve ourselves for the new year, 2019. Hopefully, everybody had a good Christmas. Everybody uh, got along well. Everybody uh, was an optimist instead of a pessimist. Because every time we have people come over for holidays, um, you know. In my, in my mind, I sometimes after the end of the night is I ask the question, boy, I hope I wasn't negative, too negative. I hope I wasn't a, a pessimist. And you think that's kind of funny, but people who want to improve uh, the way they do things think that way. Uh, no matter what you do, at the end of the day, if you think, okay, what did I do wrong? Uh, even in a business, what did I do wrong? How can I improve, improve it? Um, you know, some of you don't have a filter. Sometimes you don't really care. But uh, I'm on a, on a quest this year to improve even more my self-development uh, in myself and in my business. Uh, the way I treat my family, the way I treat my friends, the way I treat other people. Um, I want to improve on that. Not saying that I'm a bad guy, but uh, I just want to try to improve. I'm a lifetime learner. I'm always learning uh, in real estate. I'm always learning whatever topic that I'm trying to improve on or learn. I'm always trying to get better. So self-improvement is one of those things. So. I'll tell you a story of when uh, I was younger and we I first started my construction business with my dad and my grandfather. In the morning, we would get up and go to the diner, our local diner. We'd hit one or two of them before, uh, you know, if it was raining out or snowing out. We'd sit down and have a cup of coffee, and we would I would listen to other people in the diner. And it always seemed to be seemed to me that most of them were pessimistic. And even back then, I was sort of pessimistic myself because uh, when somebody would talk, uh, you know, back then when somebody would talk bad about somebody or talk bad about the nation or, uh, the, you know, the president or the, somebody on the news or whatever it was, I would kind of, you've heard of birds of a feather flock together. Well, I would kind of say, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, not only did they did this, but they, they treated me this way too. Um, and I was sort of a pessimist until I learned how to turn things around. And that's what we're just going to talk about in this little model here tonight real quick. We're going to go over it. So 
Hi, Donna Britton. She said, uh, great topic. Hopefully you guys are going to like this topic a little bit. Uh, maybe we can, maybe you can tell me in the comments whether you think that you're a pessimist or optimist and why. Uh, maybe you don't want to, maybe you don't want to put any comments, but hopefully you guys uh, follow along with me and participate because a lot of times I know I'm talking and not many people want to participate. They're afraid to uh, to put out there the way they feel or the way they are. And uh, maybe maybe we could put in the comments what your New Year's resolution is pertaining to self-development, maybe being a better person, maybe listening more, or maybe teaching, uh, starting to teach more of your knowledge to other people, younger people or people that need it. And we're going to be talking a little bit more about that uh, in a little while too. But uh, as we said before, nothing can be done without hope and confidence. So that is a real positive statement. And as I tell you the story about me sitting in the diner, being a pessimist and negative, every time I went in the diner, I didn't realize it, but, uh, you know, I was, I was, I was uh, becoming more negative and negative. As I started to become more of an optimist through self-development and learning and listening to tapes and watching videos and things of that nature, hanging around people that was an optimist, I started to correct the people that uh, would say something negative. Because when, when I, I was kind of a game I played, and I, I played it with myself also. Every time I said something negative, I made force myself to think of something positive. Every time somebody in the diner would say something negative, I would say, oh, yeah, but this person was, is great at this, or this person helped me this way. Or, you know what, this person you know, might be negative a lot, but this is what they did for someone else uh, on this day or this time. So I kind of played a game with it. So... Uh, there's basically three things. If you're going to be a pessimist uh, and you want to get into this category up here in this quadrant of, of optimist, there's, I just want to talk about three things. And one of the things is start living in the now, okay? Live in the now. Don't live in your past. Maybe things that happened in your past uh, you don't want to remember. Maybe you weren't so good in the past and you did some things that you don't like or you don't want nobody to know about or things that keep coming up in your mind that you did, you know, that always uh, pulls you back, always keeps you from moving forward. Uh, forget about that. Live in the now. Today's a new day. Start fresh now in 2019. Start thinking about right now and how you're going to be an optimist and how you're going to get up here. So uh, now that's one thing. The next thing is, is to focus on clarity, okay? Get clear about what you want. Get clear about your goals. Get clear about what steps you're going to take to, to uh, achieve those goals. I know in the past, uh, I don't like goals. I never used to like goals, and I used to think it was all hocus pocus. And used to think that, you know, it, it didn't matter if you wrote down a goal or not. Well, the power of putting something down on paper is, is amazing. And... Uh, as Donna says, Donna Britton says to, to be happier and focus my optimistic traits and see the positive things around me. See, she's, she's focusing on clarity. She's focusing on the things around her that makes her optimistic and that uh, creates those traits and propels her to even better things, uh, uh, positive things. So if you're down here and you're pessimistic, you're, you're basically uh, negative most of the time. And how does that feel? You want to get up here to the positive, okay? On this axis here, we're going to be working from negative to positive. And from over here, uh, it's basically negative to positive also. But we just want to show you on this side, as you're doing this, you're, you're, you're creating a, you know, you're creating a, a, a beeline to be becoming an optimist. I know we're not going to get any into this too deep, but I just want to talk about it. Um, Mirza, my buddy Mirza, how you doing, buddy? It's all about our mindset and perception, exactly what we talked about, uh, the perception, uh, emotional perception of uh, being positive. So I want to talk about a metaphor. It's kind of like an optimist is a man that sees a light that's not there, and a pessimist is a fool who tries to blow it out. So that's kind of like what it is. So. Um, if, if, if 
you know, you're, you're working to be a better person. These are some of the things that you can work on in 2019. All right. The third thing that I want to talk about here is if you're going to make it into the optimist uh, category up there in the quadrant, you want to hang with positive people. And, you know, Mirza already talked about uh, the mindset and perception. So the way you perceive other people, the mindset of other people, that's who you want to hang around with. Okay. Hang with optimists or positive crowd. When I was younger, uh, you know, I was I was pretty much a pessimist and do things that I shouldn't have been doing probably in, in some cases. And, uh, you know, that I didn't do nothing that bad that, that hurt me now. But uh, the way I think, the way I was thinking back then uh, was nowhere near what I've evolved to thinking now. And how that helps me is it propels me to a successful business, uh, successful communication, successful re relationship with my wife, my family, my friends, my business partners. Um, and it just all around, it makes everything work so much better. So if we get into this other quadrant over here, I want to talk about diagnosing uh, the way we think. Okay. If you don't know that you're a pessimist, you don't know what to do. If you don't know uh, if you're a a pessimist or optimist, you know, sit down and write things down. Grab a piece of paper. Get a yellow pad, a small yellow pad that you can write on every day and write down things. If you hear something negative, write down the opposite, the positive. If you write down what you think uh, have held you back in the past, write it down the positive. So that is starting to get you to uh, propel you to something better. And that's the, pos the optimist person. All right. Start writing things down. Power of the pen. Okay, the next thing is uh, ask the right questions. If, if you're not sure, if you really want to get the right answer, you've got to ask the right questions. Just take, for example, when you get up in the morning and you don't want to go to work, say, why do I always have to get up early? Why do I have to go to work? Why don't you start asking the right questions? What can I learn today at work? or your business. What can I learn today at a business? If you have something that you don't want to do, uh, or that it's, you know, one of those tasks that you just hate, uh, dive right into it. Do that task first and write it down. Ask the question in your daily logbook, uh, your daily to-do list, these yellow pads. Um, ask the right question. And the third thing, you want to be as uh, proactive. You want to be proactive in your thinking. You want to stop letting others drive your car. Uh, what I mean by that is, you know, stop letting other people make decisions for you. A lot of times uh, at one point in my life, I was pretty much a follower. I let other people make decisions for me. And in some cases, they were the wrong decisions. So once uh, I started becoming a leader, started uh, asking myself the right questions, writing things down, learning things, focusing on clarity, hanging with the right crowd, living in the now, then uh, I, I started seeing massive uh, positive results. So Mirza, Mirza says the positive mindset is a powerful mental force, and he's so correct about that. So once you start asking the right questions, then you start getting the right answers. And, uh, you know, you want to ask yourself, who are you? Are you a leader? Are you a follower? Uh, you want to be an optimist. You want to uh, find out, you know, ask yourself certain questions. If somebody criticized you today, right now, if somebody criticized the way you act, the way, what, the things you do, and, uh, you know, maybe somebody on here is saying, why are you talking about optimists and pessimists and all this stupid nonsense, nonsense, Jay? Well, how would I, how would I react to that? I would react to that in knowing that I'm a leader. Uh, I ask myself the right questions. I share my knowledge with people. I try to do the right thing. It's I'm making a, the world a better place by learning how to go from pessimist to optimist, sharing information on how to get to that position for other people. So it doesn't matter what people think of me anymore. It doesn't matter what people say to me anymore uh, in a negative way. So this is how I find out who I am, uh, how I you know, try to act, I'm in a driver's seat now. I don't let other people drive the car. So, but believe me, when we really do get in the car and we drive 
to a destination. My wife always drives, and a lot of times I fall asleep. So that's just a side note. So this this third uh, in the diagnosis uh, part. Oh, Tom's laughing at me over there. So uh, the third one over here is um, who are you? Stop letting people drive. You drive. You be the driver. Next uh, quadrant up here is learn. So to get into the optimist uh, quadrant, uh, one of the things we, you might want to do uh, when you're learning how to do this is watch these live events. Watch live events. Hang with the right crowd. Hang with crowd. I mean, if you're watching me right now and you want to learn these things, if you want to uh, start hanging and listening to and watching and model, modeling uh, the right persons, uh, it, it may not be me, but find a mentor, okay? Look for a mentor. Look for somebody that you can model. That means somebody that you can um, clone, somebody that you – when they say these things, you say them sometimes because they're positive. When they do these things, you do these things because they're positive. It doesn't have to be every single thing, but pick out the things that you like, some of the things that is going to move you into that quadrant, and start doing them. Uh, start doing Facebook Lives yourself. If you've ever been afraid to do a Facebook Live and always wanted to, take the bull by the horn and get comfortable being uncomfortable. Uh, ask for help. Find a mentor. Ask me. If you want to do a Facebook Live, I can tell you exactly what to do, exactly what to say. Uh, you know, it may not be perfect, but it's something that uh, that you wanted to get out of your comfort zone and do and start being optimistic about it. All right. So find a mentor and model them, no matter if it's no matter who it is. It could be a friend, could be somebody on Facebook, could be somebody you read in a book, somebody you see on TV, some, uh, somebody that's local in your community. Um, the next thing is listen. Listen to others. Uh, when you see somebody that's an optimist, kind of listen to them uh, and watch them. Sit down and really see how they act, what they say to other people, how they react when uh, you know people say things to them. What you really want to do is see in situations that uh, maybe an emergency situation or maybe in a situation where somebody gave them criticism, uh, you want to watch and see how and listen and see how they react. The next thing is maybe you could attend functions. And I mean local functions, or it could be across the U.S. It could be in the next state, next county, uh, next town, next village, next channel. On, uh, it could be on Instagram, YouTube, Tumblr, LinkedIn. Find somebody that uh, is an optimist and, you know, Try to model them. Try to uh, improve your improve your situation, and for the new year. So I'm, let's look at some comments here, real quick. And Donna Britton says, "I grew up in a negative household." You know, the the data and research shows that most people do. I mean, we're born with a, a negative. Uh, our mentor talks about this person on this shoulder, a person on this shoulder. When you were born, you were pretty much. Uh, in a negative environment. This whole world is basically a negative environment. Look at the news every day. It doesn't matter what channel news or what which one you, it doesn't matter which one you watch, it's all negative. So we were brought up in a negative environment. And and I, I agree, Donna, most of us grew up in a negative environment, no fault of ours or our parents, but because we just didn't know, uh, you know, we, we in most cases, we weren't fed positive things like we are today. For the most part now, uh, with, with uh, more so social media, it's, it's a lot of negative, but people like myself and you, Donna, and, and Mirza, and I, I know a lot of other people that are listening to this and that we follow and that we've learned from, they're trying to drive home the positive optimist. That's why I do these Facebook Lives. That's why we're on here. People are on here listening to this. I get on and listen to other people. Uh, Exactly people that are on here, Donna and Mirza. We've done many Skypes together, uh, spreading the optimist uh, um, news and trying to become better and teach other people and become better. So you're absolutely right. When uh, we, we've grown up, all of us, in a negative environment for the most part because media, uh, 
you know, there's a, def- a number of different um, platforms and places that school, uh, a lot of times uh, you see bullying and you see a lot of negative uh, situations. Uh, now you see more and more people trying to teach positive things. So it's, it's a good thing. So hopefully you, you guys go out there and if you're teaching, you spread the positive news, spread the optimist, teach people how to go from being a pessimist to optimist. I want to talk about, uh, I think it was, uh, I want to find some research. Uh, I, I, I wanted to find some research on pessimist and optimist, but I couldn't find much other than reading quite a bit. There wasn't really any percentages without, uh, go, you know, reading for 20 minutes. But real quick, I just want to tell you, uh, I, I checked on health behavior and policy review, and it was, uh, I think it's called the MESA study. People, I'm just going to read this to you. People who look at a glass of water and see it as half full are two times more likely than their glass half empty counterparts to be in good cardiovascular health. And according to findings recently published in the Journal of Health and Behavior and Policy Review, that was the what what they said. So and I know this is a few years back, but this one here in July 2014, another MESA study found an association between middle aged and older adults who reported high levels of hostility and feelings of hopelessness and an increased risk of stroke being a pessimist. Uh, so that right there tells you, I mean, there's a lot of data and research that uh, that points to being an optimist helps you with your health and helps you succeed in business, helps you succeed through life. So I just want to talk about that a little bit. And, you know, as I, uh, as I get on here during the Facebook Lives, I just want everybody to know that some of my goals are to get better at things, to be uh, succeed better at business, succeed better at teaching, sharing my knowledge, uh, whether it be in real estate or business or uh, at my job uh, as a lineman. And I, and I taught fellow linemen, uh, apprentice linemen for years, how to become a journeyman, how to become a hot stick, how to become, uh, you know, move up the ladder and become better. And I do the same thing part-time here now every waking minute in real estate uh, with motivation, inspiration, and uh, real estate. So my mindset is always to improve myself, become, uh, I am a lifetime learner, but to become better. So, and I want that for all of you. And, you know, I, I try to figure out ways, uh, topics to teach. So um, let me know what other topics you want to hear, what uh, what we can share on here. Um, if there's anything you want to know, anything that you want me to touch on, teach on, share my knowledge on, let me know in these Facebook Lives. Don't be afraid to get on here and tell me something you don't like. So, tell me something you do like. Let me know what you want to learn. Uh, give me some advice. I'm always here to listen. I really like you guys to to be involved in these Facebook lives. And I still want you guys to know that uh, I've created a course, Dream Home Academy, that teaches renters to become homeowners. I teach beginner real estate investors to become better. Uh, somebody that doesn't know anything about real estate investing. Uh, I also teach and mentor those people uh, to become investors. And But I also want to teach and learn at the same time to become uh, a better optimist and a better person. So I want to say hi uh, to a few more people that's joined us. Jeff, Bridget, Lauren, Paul. um, Jamie, Justice, Sarah, Kelly, Mary, Karen. I see we got quite a few people on tonight, so that's great. Um, Give me me, uh, some likes. Give me some hearts. Share this, please share this on on your uh, platform if you know somebody that uh, this could help. And uh, continue to give me some likes and shares and questions. Give me some questions on here. Uh, Let me know what I'm doing wrong. Let me know what I'm doing right. Let me know if you, actually, let me know if you want to be a guest. Uh, I have a platform called Be Live TV. And I want, I'm going to start, uh, I have in the past, but I'm going to start more and more interviewing uh, and talking about things like this. Uh, with other people. Let me know if you want to be a guest on one of my interviews and give me your email in the comment section. Let me know, yes, you'd be interested in doing an interview with me and give me your email. Let me know what you want to be interviewed on 
if it wants to be on real estate, wants to be on motivation, inspiration, home ownership, no matter what it is. Uh, I'm going to be doing more and more interviews, and I'd really like to touch base with you and talk to you and learn from you guys. So Mirza says, whatever story we tell our brain, our mind, it has no choice but to accept it as reality. That's true. And that goes for, you know, we ask the right questions. If you ask what question you ask, you're going to get the answer in your mind. As I said before, uh, you know, when someone says, why does this always happen to me? You're going to get the answer. The answer is, this happens to me all the time because I, I don't have the right habits. I don't have, you know, I haven't learned the process. Uh, I'm always saying negative things. Uh, it happens to me because, you know, you say, why does it happen to me? It always happens to me. Why do I have bad luck? Why don't you say, change the question you ask yourself and ask, uh, why am I grateful? Why, why do I always want to be, why do, you know, positive questions. Tom, what's a good question, a positive question to ask yourself that you would get the answer for? Uh, why am I so awesome? Why am I so awesome, Tom says. Well, Tom's so awesome because he puts the effort in. No, <laughs> I'm telling him the answer. But when you ask the right questions, you're going to get the right answers. So you, that, that's why it's so important uh, in your diagnosis to ask the right questions. Start changing the questions you ask yourself, then you're going to get a lot better answers. Okay? If we ask why this doesn't work, you're going to get why it doesn't work, and it's not going to work over and over and over again. You ask how can I make this work? Why, why can't I do this? You ask, how can I do this? And them answers, write them down, okay? Mirza, in our mind, there are always thoughts, mostly unguided thoughts, but awareness is the first step to change. Once you are aware, now you have control center in your mind where you now have control over guided versus unguided thoughts. Our thoughts become things. Yes, what you think is what you can do. There's a lot of different quotes. I should have wrote some of them down. Usually I do um, on this. So what was the thing that I was going to tell them the last thing before I left? Uh, okay, there we go. Jerry, how you doing, Jerry Warren? Pessimism is the biggest reason for people not doing. Just do it. Absolutely. Mercer says the biggest competition we have is between our ears. That is absolutely the truth. Motivation. Jerry loves that. Brianna, part of our team, Brianna Hurdo, she, uh, our social media manager, she does a lot of things for us. She says, super excited for your course to come out. Uh, us too, actually. I can't wait. We're, we're pretty close. I know we've been saying this for a long time, but we're real close. We got it switched over from Thinkific to Kajabi. And uh, we're just doing some final videos and going over it. Listen, if you want to be a beta tester for my course, if you want to beta test it, let me know in the comment section or send me an email at jbtogs at yahoo.com. And uh, we're looking for four or five beta testers. We already had two or three uh, beta testers now, but we're looking for uh, three or four or five more right now. That has. The, make sure you have the time to go through every single part of it. Because that's what we're also waiting to launch this course is uh, from our beta testers to get done looking at it and tweaking. We're tweaking it a little bit. So let us know on that too. We uh, asked for two, three, four different things. So make sure that uh, you let me know in the comment section if you guys are interested in that. Change your mindset frees you. That's what Jerry Warren says. Mirza Ali, how can I afford it? Very positive question. That compels and forces to think outside of the box. That's right. A lot of times for a house, for instance, uh, you think your credit's bad. You went bankrupt. You say, "How can, I can't afford it. Why can't I afford it? Uh, I can't afford it, you say. The question you want to ask, like Mirza said, is how can I afford it? You know, what can I sell to find a down payment? What can I do to create extra uh, money? Or, you know, if I want to go on a vacation, a lot of times I remember thinking way back was, I can't saying I can't afford it instead of saying how can I afford it once I started saying that I found the funds to go on vacation I invested in real estate I sold uh, everything I had in the garage sale that I didn't use I went in the attic I found uh, things to sell to use to go on vacation to use to invest in a course to use uh, for gas money to drive to the next town or the next city for vacation um, 
I got someday I want to show you my wife and myself. Uh, she has a notebook that's tens and 20, 20, probably 30 pages long that I used to write down the things that I bought in the free trader or things that I had laying around and I sold them for more money. That's because I asked the question, how can I afford it? Not, I can't afford it. And I came up with those answers and that's the precisely why uh, what we got written down in that book, why I did the things I did because I asked the right questions. That's when things started turning around for me. So enough about uh, pessimists and optimists. I want to leave you uh, <laughs> with a little quote here. The optimist fell from the top of the skyscraper. As he passed the fourth floor, he was overheard muttering, so far, so good. So Tom <laughs> Tom likes that quote, and uh, we didn't really hear anybody saying that because we didn't see anybody jumping from a skyscraper, but that was a quote from uh, someone who did. So I'll leave you uh, with the optimist um, thoughts, and I want you to learn and share uh, that's another way to, to get to that optimist uh, part of, of the quadrant is start sharing with others. Start teaching others uh, positive things, things that you learn, but mostly inspiring, motivating thoughts, actions uh, of yourself that you've done. Uh, start teaching things. You know, we've been around, some of us have been along around a lot longer than others, but even if you, you know, you don't have to be around a long time to, to learn something. Start sharing some of those things you learn with other people. And that shows uh, they in turn share with other people. And if you start spreading the, me spreading the message of positive things, op being an optimist, seeing the glass half full, other people start to uh, catch that, almost like a disease. It's, a, it's the optimist disease. And that's something to catch. So share it with other people. And I'm so glad you guys... Uh, stuck with me this far. Say hi to me, share this, like this, and I'm here to share all my, all my knowledge and to become a better optimist just like you guys are. So love you. See you later. Spread the good words, good deeds.